the VLS training video. Today we are going to talk about how to use the laser safely and efficiently. My name is Fabiana, I'm a Makerspace student technician, and I will be guiding you through a step-by-step -step tutorial to use this low-powered CO2 laser safely and within the Ingram Hall Makerspace guidelines. Let's start by talking about the basic laser fundamentals and how it works. We have three lasers here in the Ingram Hall Makerspace, including two CO2 lasers and a compact fiber laser. The two CO2 lasers are located here in the rapid prototyping room. The 50 watt universal laser systems called the VLS 350 and the 90 watt full spectrum laser known as the FSL Pro series. The compact fiber laser is our 500 watt FSL and is a high powered industrial machine that is located in the industrial maker space. This video's focus will be on the VLS 350 as it is our entry level laser. Laser machines such as ours have two main functions, cutting and etching. Etching is a process in which the first layers of the material gets engraved without piercing through the material line by line sequentially, while cutting is when the laser is turned up and cuts along an outline or path all the way through the part. This machine uses a 50 watt CO2 laser, which works by exciting a CO2 filled gas chamber, shooting out high energy photons, which is then redirected by the very sensitive mirrors into a concentrated beam at your part. The high energy of the laser causes the material to instantly heat up and evaporate, which leaves a mark or cuts the material. The evaporated material can be toxic, which is why there is a vacuum attached to the back of each machine. When engraving, the laser power is fluctuated while the movement of the head is consistent, allowing for controlled cut intensity, depending on what part of the etch process it is in. When cutting, the laser power is constantly high while the laser moves along the desired outline. Before we explain how the machine works, let's talk safety guidelines. Because the laser is evaporating the cutting material, the particles that are in the air can be toxic, some more than others. This is why we have a list of supported and outlawed materials which can be found on the supplied SOP or on this training module. Examples of materials that should never be inside the VLS include PVC, ABS, polycarbonate, HDPE, polystyrene, polypropylene foam, fiberglass, or coated carbon fiber. When you finish a cut, you should not open the lid immediately. Give the machine a couple seconds to vacuum out all of the airborne particles first. The Makerspace also has a store where we sell materials at cost for your convenience. All of these materials are tested and compatible for our lasers. Consult a Makerspace student technician if you have any question about materials. Keep in mind, some materials can etch but not cut, such as anodized aluminum, while others can cut but not etch, such as thick paper. Trying to do an unsupported operation using the wrong material can cause issues. Your material choice will of course be based on your project, but this is something that you should always consider before operating the laser systems. Some supported materials have a risk of catching fire, such as wood or paper. It is important that you use the correct settings when choosing to work with wood. If you follow proper guidelines, there is very minimal risk of a fire. However, if one were to start, first try to put the fire up by smothering it with an extra piece of material. If that is unsuccessful, there is a fire extinguisher located at the front of the makerspace next to the makerspace student technician desk. Always speak to an MST if a fire occurs, no matter how small, and never panic. This is the main reason why you are not allowed to leave the station while the laser is running. Lastly, the laser is a high energy beam and is very bright. If they were to hit you directly in the eye, it could cause permanent damage. These machines, however, have polarized covers on them to severely limit the amount of laser getting out. But it is still best practice to not stare directly at the laser, especially on highly reflective surfaces such as anodized aluminum. With safety overview covered, let's start talking about the operation of the VLS 350. Keep in mind, all of the safety guidelines you just heard apply to all of our laser systems, but everything moving forward will only apply to the VLS 350. The VLS is a computer-driven machine, meaning it has to have a dedicated computer. This is why there are two computers supplied and already set up here. Keep in mind, these machines are for VLS 350 use only. If you are still designing your part or project, there are lots of other computers with the same software you can use to prepare, including laptops if you wish to do it outside of the makerspace. Once you're ready and have of course completed this training, you can check out the VLS 350 from the front desk. 
checking out these machines is a little different than most. Before checking out, you will need to know what kind of bed you need first, as this is what you will be taking with you. The VOS 350 has four different beds for four different applications. The cutting bed, the etching bed, the pin table bed, and the rotary bed. The cutting bed is specifically for cutting through material. This will be the most popular bed by far since it is the most versatile, but please only check this out if your part requires cutting. The etching bed does not support cutting, but has a more flat and rigid surface for those projects that need a very clean and precise etching. The pen table bed is used for those materials that have odd shapes and need uneven supports. Keep in mind, this is the only bed that does not support auto Z height at all, which we will get to later. The rotary bed is used only for round objects such as cups, tumblers, and glassware. Installing the beds are all very similar. They simply need the machine homed before insertion and dropped in gently and firmly. The rotary bed requires an extra step of the tailstock to be adjusted depending on your material. The cutting bed needs to be treated carefully since the sharp stainless steel grid can cut you or be easily bent. When dropping the beds in, you should also be sure to not hit the black nozzle, as you can break the head of the laser this way. If you're having clearance issues, you can temporarily move the nozzle out of the way by backing out the screw here and lightly pulling on the nozzle downwards. After inserting the etching bed, you should tighten the two screws to ensure you have a flat and even surface to engrave on. With the bed installed, next comes your material. Most common material shapes come in the form of flat sheets. These are the easiest since you can simply place down the grid where desired. Round objects using the rotary bed is relatively easy as well. Simply push the opened end of the cup onto the cone like so and bring up the rear to have a firm and concentric hold. Do your best to make sure your part is centered as this will greatly affect the quality of the finished product. Keep in mind, the rotary does not support mugs or cups with handles as these often collide with the head or the table. Lastly, the pin table. Simply insert pins where desired to support your object and place the object on top. Now, with your bed installed and the material selected and inserted, we will set the Z height. There are two ways, automatically and manually. Remember that whenever your material is as thick as you plan to cut, then you can use the automatic Z height. Examples that fall into this category are flat pieces of acrylic, wood, or paper. If your material is not, like for example, a leather book cover where the material thickness you are etching is only a portion of thickness of the entire booklet, you will need to manually set the height. To do this, you will need to use the focus tool located on the front of the machine. Place the focus tool on the surface of the material. Raise the bed using the up and down buttons on the machine until the edge of the laser guide head meets with the notch in the focus tool. Leave the Z-axis in its new position and remove the focus tool from the laser process area. With all that done, you're ready to close the lid and prepare the program from the computer. Now, the VLS 350 can be used as an arts and crafts tool, but it can also make functional interlocking wood frames, living hinges made from a single piece of wood, custom glassware, and so much more. Because of this, there are basically two main ways to send a project to the machine. For the more artistic projects like engraving logos or text, Adobe Illustrator would be the most appropriate. For making parts from a solid model design, you can simply place a DXF onto Illustrator. Remember, the VLS 350 is a printer, so you could also print from software, such as Microsoft Word. In both situations, you will be bringing up your program and printer to the VLS 350 as if it was a printer. When using Adobe Illustrator, there are some preparations required before importing your design. Begin by creating a new project from the opening screen and go to the Print tab. Change the units from points to inches and enter in the dimension of your material. When using the rotary tool, the width of your artboard will be the overall height of your cup, and the height will be the circumference. For example, because this cup is about 8.5 inches tall and 2.8 inches in diameter, then the dimensions entered into Illustrator will be approximately 8.5 inches tall by 9 inches wide. With that information entered, you can create your project. Keep in mind, there are measuring instruments inside the red toolbox in this room. Once loaded, you will be presented with a blank canvas. This is your material envelope. This is the limitations of where you can place your project. Here, you can import your project by clicking File, then Place. 
Here, you can do all the manipulation of your part, such as moving, rotating, reflecting, scaling, and more. When it comes to Adobe Illustrator, the colors and line thickness matter. For example, red lines are intended for vector cutting, where the laser follows the path of the line and is at full cutting power. However, if the item is black, then it will be raster engraved. This is when the laser head scans back and forth above your design and engraves the material line by line. Line thickness is not important when raster engraving. If you are engraving simple lines, it is recommended to change your vector lines to blue to vector engrave. Vector engraving is similar to vector cutting in that it follows the path of the line, but will not go all the way through the part. Make sure your colors and line thickness match the correct settings in order to have a successful project. When you are ready to cut your part, go to File, then Print. From here, we will select the VLS 350 as our printer and use the Print Settings dialog to edit our settings of the laser. A pop-up dialog will appear. This is where you will be inputting all of the necessary information about your print job. You will find and select your material type from the material database here, input your material thickness here, and update your fixture type to rotary when using the rotary tool or none when using any other bed. Intensity adjustments allow you to change the intensity of your raster engraving, vector marking, and vector cutting. The default settings are set to 0%. Increasing the settings increases the intensity of the engraving process, giving deeper results. Decreasing the setting decreases the intensity of the engraving and gives you shallower results. Always start at 0% on a scrap piece of material and make any appropriate changes accordingly. There is no need to make changes on these controls unless undesired results are produced. With your machine set up, material inserted, and program now ready, the last thing to do is run your part. Once you are happy with the settings, select Apply, then OK, Print, then print again. You will then open the Universal Control Panel, or UCP, by selecting the carrot on the bottom right screen and selecting this red icon. If you cannot find the UCP icon, you can simply look up UCP on the computer. The Control Panel for the VLS will appear and you can now start setting up the machine for a print. At this point, you can press the power button on the laser. Before placing the bed inside the machine, select Home Z as this will lower the bottom to give ample room to insert the bed. After you have done this, carefully install the appropriate bed into the machine. If assistance is needed, please ask an MST. Since you've already homed Z, you simply need to home the X, Y axes. To ensure accuracy, you need to do this every time you start up the machine. The machine automatically homes in the X, Y axes when it starts up. Next, we place the material inside the machine and use the icons on the right of the screen to move your outline. The workspace size you see on the control panel is the size of the cutting and engraving beds. You cannot cut or engrave anything exceeding 24 by 12 inches as this will be out of range. By selecting focus view, you can move your laser nozzle anywhere on the bed within this range. Move the laser nozzle above your material and select relocate view to move your design or outline to your desired location. Depending on what part of the outline you have selected, that is where the design will move to in relation to your pointer after selecting Move to Pointer. You also have the option of zooming in for greater accuracy and viewing the estimated job completion time. Now that the machine is homed and leveled, you are now ready to run. Press the green play button to print your design. While your print is going, I recommend hovering your hand over the power button while keeping an eye on how the first few cuts or engraving layers look. Remember to wait for the vacuum to finish collecting all the airborne particles before retrieving your print. Although this compact laser is easy to use, you may run into a few complications. Some of the common problems can be the laser double etching and creating a double image of the design or outline. If this happens, notify your nearest MST for help. There may either be a loose screw or the lenses may need cleaning. A common problem when using the rotary tool is the nozzle hitting against the rotary bed. The nozzle can easily be removed by unscrewing the screw in the front and popping the nozzle cap off. Once you are finished using the laser, home Z again to have space to remove your bed. You may then log out of the computer and return the bed back to an MST at the front office. For a more hands-on approach towards learning the proper and safe way to use this equipment, the Makerspace offers a variety of workshops created by MST such as myself featuring the use of the VLS 350. These workshops can be found on the Makerspace webpage and only require a passing score on the Rapid Prototyping Safety Quiz. It is a great opportunity to work with an MST, meet new people, and work on a personal project. 
Remember, if you run into any complications, you can always ask an MST for assistance. Thank you for watching the VLOS training video, and I look forward to seeing you here at the Major Space.